Larger smartphones have been dominating handset sales for a while now, so the idea of a tablet as basically little more than a big screen phone has lost a lot of its appeal. Instead, we're seeing manufacturers launch devices with new functionality that aims to boost productivity, bringing us things like Microsoft's Surface Series or Apple's iPad Pro lineup. Now Lenovo is looking to shake the market up with its new Yoga Book, a device that's not quite a laptop and not quite a graphics tablet, but instead offers some of the most interesting looking hybrid tablet hardware we've come across in a long time. It's really ambitious, and while that could mean big success, it also spells that many more opportunities for failure. Does Lenovo manage to avoid those missteps while bringing us a supercharged productivity package? I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena, tackling that question right now as part of my Lenovo Yoga Book review. It seems these days that the popular route to take for a hybrid tablet is that of a convertible device. Give it a keyboard, sure, but one that pops off for some unadulterated tablet action. With the Yoga Book, Lenovo's going in a very different direction, producing something that follows the design cues of a standard laptop, one with its screen firmly attached. The screen and keyboard here, a term we're using quite loosely, are joined at the proverbial hip, or in this case, a fascinatingly engineered hinge that allows the Yoga Book to start flat, fold out 180 degrees to fully flat again, and keep right on folding the rest of the way through the circle, ending up just as flat as it began. The real magic here is the keyboard surface. Open up the Yoga Book, and lights click on from within to reveal what Lenovo calls its Halo keyboard. It's all touch sensitive, there are no moving parts, and you simply tap your fingers on illuminated squares to enter in text. There's even a trackpad area below for pointer control. Long press the stylus button tucked away in the keyboard's corner, and those lights turn off, transitioning the panel to its graphics digitizer mode. Here, you use the included real pen stylus to write on the digitizer surface, with your inputs mirrored on the tablet screen. But maybe the coolest part is when you pop out the pen stylus tip for a real ballpoint ink tip, and slide the magnetically attaching notepad in place. Now you can sketch or take notes right on a real sheet of paper, and the Yoga Book will store a digital copy of whatever you write. In addition to operating in a lay-flat position, where the screen reflects what you're writing in real time, you can even fold the digitizer panel all the way around, turn the tablet screen off, and use it just like a clipboard, only once again, one that digitizes everything you write on it. That's a great idea, but actually using the tablet in such a manner can be confusing. It's easy to lose track of whether or not the stylus mode is active, and while there's an icon that lights up to let you know when it's engaged, depending on ambient lighting conditions, that icon can appear illuminated when it's actually not. And if you keep writing when it's off, your input isn't going to be captured. You also have to remember to manually press a button each time you start a new page, or your pen inputs will all be stacked on top of each other. The stylus software means well, but in our testing it frequently lost track of the tablet's orientation, storing digital copies of notes upside down. That's easily remedied, but it's the sort of thing that speaks to the lack of refinement we experienced all around. The real pen stylus also feels like an idea that's halfway towards being great. The tip switches between a stylus and ink pen, and the replacements for the latter aren't some expensive proprietary option, which is nice. But if you're going to be using both, it's not only a little inconvenient to be switching back and forth, there's no good place to store one tip while you're using another. For that matter, there's no built-in place to store the real pen itself. The tablet screen consists of a 10.1-inch display with a 1080p class 1200x1920 resolution. That's not only lower than competing productivity tablets like the iPad Pro, it's less than year-old Lenovo tablets like the Yoga Tab 3 Pro. And while its 430-nit brightness level looks alright indoors, outside it can struggle to be seen against bright sunlight, and that's unfortunate for a device as portable as this one is. Processing power comes from a quad-core Intel Atom chip, armed with access to 4 gigs of RAM. That sounds pretty solid, but we found the tablet's interface to be jerky at times, and even simple web browsing made it look like the Yoga Book was struggling to keep up. Benchmark testing shows the tablet performing on par with upper-mid-range phones like the Huawei Honor 8. For the price the Yoga Book goes for, we didn't expect too much, but performance is still a bit disappointing. Lenovo gives the tablet 64 gigs of internal storage, which is fantastic, and support for microSD expansion, which should be good, but presented problems of its own. While some cards work just fine, we found the tablet refusing to read XFAT formatted microSD cards that some of our other Android devices had no problems either reading or writing. Nougat may be the Android release that's synonymous with split-screen app support, but Lenovo's managed to shoehorn a multi-window mode into Marshmallow for the Yoga Book. 
like so many other of the tablet's features, it looks a lot better than using it ultimately proves to be. For one thing, you can't resize these floating windows at all, they're one size fits all, and plenty of apps just don't work in this mode. We'd love to have a windowed calculator, but that's among the many apps that inexplicably refuses to be windowed. With the ability to stand the screen up thanks to that nifty hinge and the presence of stereo speakers, it might look like the Yoga Book is armed for some media playback, but the speakers point out to the side instead of facing forward, and they're part of the tablet's keyboard part, not the screen. So when you're watching a video, the speakers make it sound like audio is coming from way behind the display. It's not a great experience. Oh, and that hinge we keep mentioning? It looks really cool and does work pretty well, but it's got a couple of loose segments in it that rattle back and forth as you move the tablet. And as this is a productivity-focused machine and not a can of spray paint, we could do without the rattling. You also need to be careful using the hinge around carpets or any fabric with loose threads, as it has a way of grabbing and trapping them. The Yoga Book has a camera, two of them in fact, a 2 megapixel front facer on the screen and an 8 megapixel camera on the keyboard itself that's also a front facer, depending on how you hold the device anyway. Neither is great in low light conditions, so the 8 megapixel camera occasionally produces some decent shots outdoors. Even then though, we found the camera struggling with focus at times. And if you're compelled to film some video with the Yoga Book, the tablet supports up to 1080p recording. Again, focus never felt super sharp, with perhaps the exception of really up-close subjects. Battery life is decent, but not great, with the Yoga Book's 8500mAh battery only giving us about 7 hours of screen on time in our tests. While that's better than a real laptop, it still might come up short of day-long usage, depending on how hard you push things. Recharging time was also really slow, taking over 3 hours even with the included fast charger. Finally, we should touch on the other Yoga Book options that are out there. This model's pop-out tray is micro SD only, but there are Yoga Books that accept SIM cards for cellular operation, if you're living in the right market at least. There's also a Windows 10 version, and while this Android edition sells for about $500, the Windows model goes for $550. It's not hard to understand why Lenovo made the Yoga Book the product it is. After all, it sounds like a great idea, an ultra-portable laptop with a mobile-first focus and some exceptional stylus support. And whether you're an artist or someone who just appreciates an analog touch in this increasingly digital world, the ability to capture data from a written page in real time is pretty cool. But for all the good ideas Lenovo had, it feels like almost every aspect of this tablet is lacking in a few key areas. From the stylus, to the hinge, to the display, to even Lenovo's custom software, we can't throw a stone without hitting something we wish were done a little differently. And in some cases, more than a little. I hope none of this discourages Lenovo though, as it may be onto something big here. But in a lot of ways, the Yoga Book feels like a first gen product that's really going to come into its own in another couple generations. I just hope Lenovo has what it takes to stick with this concept and see it through as it works out the kinks. If you're an early adopter, maybe pick up the Yoga Book and see what it offers right now. But most users will probably want to sit this guy out and wait for a sequel. I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming reviews.